Hey, this is the Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 393. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. We're continue venturing through Eldraine by visiting the Witch's Cottage. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? We are back. What is going down? The whole ton is going down. We're both, if you're watching on YouTube, which you should be, you'll notice that neither of us are wearing any CCO merch because we got to keep that shit clean. Oh, I am looking. For all of our adventures coming up over the next couple Ooh. of weeks. we got Vegas. we got Calgary. we got information about all that stuff coming up, all the things where you can meet us, see us, play games with us, tell us that we suck and give us the finger. But before we get to any of that... We have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com, their source for all your gaming needs. Very much so. And I, I, I did a thing. What'd you do? I didn't. Well, the thing I did is not something. What? <laughs> yeah. The thing I did was, sense. was not order something. What? Though. What? If I had ordered it. I would have used CCO Summer <laughs> promo code and saved 5% on it. Why didn't you order it? Forgot. How do you forget? Pulled an Uncle Brando. Oh, man. <laughs> man. Is it Full Art Lady of Laughter? I need a Full Art Lady of Laughter real bad. It ain't. Man, I want one of those. It ain't. It's got frogs on it. Mm. Draws me cards. So here's the thing. <sighs> when I do order this thing. What's the thing? Um, I don't remember. You just don't want to tell me because you know that I'm going to order it. No. That's probably it's, what it uh, is. It's the one that destroys two target creatures and it's got... Uh, uh, Spinning Darkness. Undaunted. No, it's got. What's the one where other other opponents make it cheaper? Uh. Man, it was it was it was a commander only card, and then it was reprinted in Commander Masters in foil. And I need one for Lord of Tressorhorn. I don't know. Anyways, so I make the order. I use CCO Summer promo code and get five percent off. Is what you would have done. Yes. If you made the order. Yes. But you didn't. No. You left it to me to make the order. Yes. Yeah. Well. It, yeah. yeah, buddy. Somebody in Vegas will have one for me. We don't know that. And mm -hmm. they could have gotten it by using CCO Summer promo code, and they would have gotten their discount also. Sure. On stuff that they were going to buy for me anyways. Ah, yes. That's the key. Is that's you're going to buy it anyway, you might as well pay less. That's important stuff. Yeah. The, and, and it's so easy. You're going to check out. Uh -huh. You go check out. Uh -huh. You hit the button. Correct. And then you enter in promo code CCO Summer. Yep. And then you hit submit. Yep. And then it'll automatically take money off of your order. You'll pay less. Yeah. Also, if it's your first time, welcome to the nation, but also use CCO Perks promo code. You do that after your order's submitted, like later on in the day, 10% of what that order was worth will be credited to your FusionGamingOnline.com account. And you could use that store credit for future purchases. Provided that that order was over 100 Canadian dollars, which translate into about 13 American dollars. Yes. Yes, very much so. Yeah. So that's what we got to say about that. If you're going to buy it anyways, you might as well get a discount. Cor 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 correct. Yes. And Easy best part. Say. Best, the best part for everybody involved here. Ooh. Is if you wanted to buy sealed product, but you're not from Canada, that's oh, yeah. a no-no. Correct. But... If you get in touch with Uncle Brando, That's me. at CCO Brando on Twitter or CommanderCoco at gmail.com, mm -hmm. and you say, hey, Brando, I want to send you my box. You can open it on Brando's box openings on the CCO YouTube channel. Brando will say, oh, sure, I can do that. Here's my address. Send it over. I'll make a video. It'll be funny. And they are. And they're fun. And, and I have proven, proven beyond doubt twice that my luck does not translate to your box necessarily oh yeah your your latest box opening you got a confetti foil parallel lives yeah and that's like 150 bucks yeah man and, and some other good stuff it wasn't like there was just a like one good card there was like a like a solid number of good cards Ooh. there was an agatha's cauldron and a beseech yeah. the witch or whatever it's called i seen it and uh what else is in there there was beseech the, the cauldron there that's was what that's the one right there was the other not doubling season or parallel lives, but the other one. Primal there's, Vigor? There's one of those two. Ooh. You know, like all the kind of chase shit was all in there except for Smothering Tithe and, and doubling season. Everything else? Got it. Cool. Well, Pretty good. if you want Uncle Brando to open you some good stuff, get after him. We'll open it on Brando's box opening. And then I'll put it in a little box and I'll send it to you. you I'll go. even alphabetize the rares for you. I actually like doing that. Ooh, that's so, weird. 
it's fun. Ah, some people like it. Yeah. Yeah. No kink shaming in the nation. We always <laughs> say. So, speaking of no kink shaming, yeah. we got the CCO Experience Times 2 coming up. Hell yeah, we do, we brother. Got, we got Vegas coming up. This show will air prior to Vegas. Yes, we'll have, we'll have not been there yet. The other show we're recording today will be post-Vegas. So we're going to pretend we're all hungover and shit. Yeah, uh, so fun and stuff. Yeah. But prior to Calgary. Yes. So a couple things. If you want to become part of a CCO experience in the future, mm-hmm. go to patreon.com slash CCO podcast. You pledge there, you get the invite. Yeah. Everybody gets the invite, like the invite goes out through Patreon Messenger. I'll talk about that in a second, because that's a schmozzle. Jesus. Yeah. You get the invite via Patreon Messenger. Mm-hmm. We make the plans in our Discord, which is another benefit to becoming a Patreon supporter. Benefit. Along with your nickname. Uh Oh, we got nicknames today. I got to do one. Well, that's fun. Yeah, I, f- I forgot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we do it. And it's all ran through the website, so payment is super easy, and you get a bunch of free stuff. We were just talking about that. Brando made up like some, some I don't even know what it is yet, variant on Open Flippy. Oh, it's going to be fun. Don't tell me. I won't. Well, w- eventually tell me, but not now. Yeah. Like, but But not then either. Tell me like sometime between right now and before we do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, yeah. <laughs> Nan. N- Nan. Nan. Then, then and now. Yeah. Yeah. Checks out. Yep. Then we've got Calgary, and that's a face-to-face games. Tour stop? No, it's a tour weekend championship. What the hell does that they even mean? they got to have better names for that, man. Mm-hmm. That sucks. Face-to-face of Mania 6. That's yes, what I'd call it. That's what I would call it too. Yeah, yeah we're going to go there. It's in Calgary, September 29 to October 1. Okay. Which is also a mouthful because it transverses two months. Yes. And we've got a promo code. If you want to buy commander packages there, you use CCO, just CCO at checkout, and you're going to get $5 off your commander package, which is essentially a free game. Yeah. Yeah, because games are like uh, if you want to do a drop in game for prizes, it's five bucks. Yep. And you come to the CCO booth to check out our sweet new merch and stuff, you can uh, get a little prize if you say, hey, I used the promo code. We'll have a list and we'll be like, hey, yeah, you did. And then we'll give you some stuff. Yeah. Last year was, what was it last time we did this? Sleeves. Uh, yeah, the new. Um, like the new the, Eclipse sleeves. The new, or, or, yeah, but what are they called now? Cortex. Yeah, like the in new your brain. Cor- the new Cortex. Uh, Cortex uh, matte grip and you could change out colors and stuff. Yes. They were really good. Uh, by Ultimate Guard. Sure. I actually used those on Sauron Thick Daddy. Thick. Did you ever get your Thick Daddy replacement coaster Sauron? Which I still maintain you don't didn't need to do. Just I didn't. laminate the old one. I, I yes, I didn't. As in, I didn't get a new one. <sighs> oh, Uncle Brando. Okay, come to Calgary. It's gonna be fun. If yeah. you're if you're Canadian, if you're from BC, if you're from Alberta, if you're from Saskatchewan, and you're listening to the show. Just come. What's the America that's underneath Alberta? Is it uh, Montana? Yeah. Some Wyoming? Of Montana. You, well, Wyoming would be a little bit of a trek. <laughs> I'm just, I don't, I don't, my American geography isn't very good. I know Seattle is there. If you're from Washington? Washington State, if you're from Idaho, if you're from Montana, North Dakota, just also come. Is Idaho in between Washington State and it's, it's, Montana? It's is around that, the place, yeah. Is that the thing? I don't know how yeah, American that's geography thing. works. I would like to know that, but I don't. If you come all the way up there, I'll give you extra stuff. <laughs> give you extra stuff, because that's a trek. And uh, we can save you money. That's why we're mentioning it. So, we have got Agatha of the Cauldron or something, right? What's her name? Agatha of the Vile Cauldron. Oh, yeah. Give her a... Give her a read because we got to talk about some magic stuff and then we've got a little bit of business to do. Agatha of the Vile Cauldron is a 1 1 for red, green. Mm-hmm. Human Warlock, activated abilities of creatures you control cost S Lex to activate, where X is X Lax. X Lax to activate. Yep. Where X is Agatha of the Vile Cauldron's power. This effect can't reduce the mana of cost of that ability to less than one. And then she also has red, green, four. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one again, trample in haste until end of turn. Okay, so she gets big. She gets swall. Yes, swall. Our activated abilities cost less. Yes. That's that's the game. That's the key. That's the key. And we could also pay six and pump her and our team infinitely. Yes. So well, it, it, it equal to the amount of mana. But the fact that it doesn't let it go below one, 
I understand why they've done that, mm -hmm. but it still sucks. Like, come on. Here, here's my criticism, and I didn't talk about this on the, on the set review, which you can watch, especially on YouTube. And uh, if if you here, what am I saying? I don't know. Jesus, Ryan, get your shit together. Yeah. If you pump her, you can't make abilities free, and that's like a built-in like safety net for it's, not going infinite. It's like a safety valve, yeah. Yeah. You don't just make her into a 10-10 and then kill people with some of the cards that we're playing in this deck. Yeah. But if you make infinite mana, you can just pump it into her and win in a different way because well, if you make infinite all mana, your, you don't even need her. All well, no, but but my point is like you can make infinite mana pretty early in the game, pretty easily and pretty affordably. Yeah. B but if you don't have an outlet, like eh, yeah, you can't do nothing with it, right? Correct. Like like, have you ever made infinite mana and been like, yeah, don't kill me, guys. I can't do anything with my <laughs> infinite mana, right? You just play the two cards in your hand. It's like Landmore Elf, Landmore Elf. Shit. Yeah, I'm hell bent to go. Yeah, <laughs> infinite mana up. <laughs> but I Agatha's got like all your dudes get plus one and trample. Yeah. So you can go infinite and win anyways. Yeah. That's my criticism. It, it's confusing, I guess. Sure. So we're gonna talk about that in a second. We've got a nickname to do though. Okay. We got a Nikki Namey. Nick. Oh, I thought that was the real. I got the their name was Nikki, and then you're gonna say their real name. Oh but man, if it's we got we got to get a patron named Nick name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Because it's funny. Okay, patreoncom slash podcast. Get your nickname. You can use it in the Discord. This is this is we got a good Discord. Hey, we do. We have the best Discord, and that's not even just me saying that. Yes, and I just kind of float around in it and look. Sometimes people don't know that I'm there, but I'm Ooh. there. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Oh, I'm lurking. I'm lurking. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Sem Hammer. Semen Hammer. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Long and hard and full of semen. Yeah. Hammer. Semen Hammer. Okay. Semen Hammer. Thank you. Welcome aboard and F you for being here. Yes, very much so. He got a... Uh, uh, they got finger blasted in the Discord. Excellent. Yeah, I an, saw that, actually. Another benefit. Yeah, because yeah. you're a lurker. That's right. I'm lurking. Yeah. So, uh, quick thing on Patreon. If you're a Patreon supporter or if you were and you're like, hey, um, I guess I'm not anymore, you should consider being a, being a patron again. That would be really good. Yeah. Because a lot of people fell off last month when they switched over to whatever Patreon did. And it was such a big thing that they sent out like apology emails because so many people <laughs> lost so many patrons. So if that was you, if you assume that you're a patron, maybe you should go and check because you might not be. And it would... Uh, it Helps would, us out a lot. It, it would help us out a ton with, with the website and the hosting and all the little things that just cost money to run the cast. Season two of Sidewalk Slam. Oh man, I'm testing out the mics. I got the new lapel mics. Yep, yep, wireless. Yep, yep. So we can like walk about the place. Ooh. Second camera, so you can see our sweet faces when we play. Oh no! I got I gotta like finish the 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 trim around the doors and stuff, so it doesn't look like we're living in a construction zone. <laughs> <laughs> but man, am I pumped! It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna sound better. It's gonna look better. It's gonna be still shit magic. <laughs> yeah, the magic might not be any better, but oh, you know yeah. it's gonna be fine. Well, people in the nation were like, "Oh man, I'm so excited! You guys are talking about sidewalk slam." I've had people contact us, like locals. Hey, uh, I heard you guys are starting up sidewalk slam. How do I sign up or get in line <laughs> and shit? And I'm like, man, people actually want to come and play with us. What? People actually want to tune in and watch? That doesn't make any sense. But hey, we're glad that you're out there, and there's whatever's wrong with you is wrong with you, and. <laughs> Don't ever change. And, and we'll never kink shame it. That's correct. Whatever it is that is wrong. Last piece. Last piece. Last piecey busy. Yeah. Last week's winner of the Boosty Pack game. Oh, yeah. They guessed Sir Gingy. Yeah. Sir, is it this, with the Y? Is that just like a, um? what's the word I'm looking for? A gender neutral sir? Yes. Because like knights are sir, whoever, whoever. Yes, that's they, exactly what it that's is. That's what that is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. yeah. They didn't want to do the thing, so they just did the other thing. Yeah. It's their game. They do what they want. Winner. Winner. You know this guy. Do you I? Like him. You like him. Oh. I'll be the judge of that. Well, YouTube name. Remember, because it's all YouTube handles now. Okay. Let's see if I can guess who it is based on this. Tanka84. Oh. 
Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's Brad. That's Brad Gale. He's from Australia. Whoa. Yeah, him and his son Max. They're good. They're Frick, good. now I gotta ship something to Australia. Yeah, big time <laughs> listeners to the show. Great, great people. I was talking to them the or to Brad the other day. Uh, he was showing me his snake. He has, he has a a, what is it, a carpet python. <laughs> I know that. I know that sounds like you just got your dink stomped into the dirt in your living room. But it's also a type of snake, apparently. <laughs> Dink stomped into the dirt in the living room. Yes. I'll give you the old carpet by the <laughs> Right? <laughs> But oh man, I love when my wife gives me a carpet python and heels. Ah, <laughs> oh, rug burn. <laughs> but yeah, so that was cool, and I met the snake. I can't remember her name. It's Princess. Oh man, it's a... oh. <laughs> Princess Olivia Snake Face. Whatever the hell her name is. Oh man, I'm but sweating. Yeah. I'm sweating. <laughs> sweating thinking about a carpet python. <laughs> <laughs> That was way funnier than I thought it was no, going to be. No. Brad's a good dude. So congratulations, my man. Uh, and then he knows what to do, but I'll tell everybody else in case they win. When they win, you get a hold of us at commandercookout at gmail.com. Let us know your full <laughs> mailing address, including postal code, area code, whatever the hell code we have to give to get mailed to you down under. And uh, we'll send you off your sticker pack, token pack, or your boring ass pack of actual really for real magic cards. Oh, yes. And you Man. might even get some new tokens. Yeah. I'm so excited about the new tokens. You guys don't even understand. Don't I, even know. I, I designed them up Ooh. to make them look Ooh. even more like they already look. Oh, shit. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Does, does he understand what I mean? I am very He excited. does because he knows. Yeah, because I designed them. You got to wait till the, I think the fall line launch. I'm hoping that they're going to be here in time for, for Calgary. Okay. Uh, but... I didn't want to pay seventy dollars American shipping to get ooh, them here. Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. That's, lots, that's lots. That's lots. No, it's like too many. if I wanted to rush them, yeah, that's too many. Yeah, that's not that. Yeah, no, no, yeah, not very good. Okay, we've got today's deck list. Today's Agatha deck list. of the Vile Cauldron, submitted by our good friend Aiden All Killer and Griller Filler Miller. I added Griller in there because he's going to be grilling some barbecue sliders in Vegas. He's one of our chefs for Vegas. He's very good and very tall. Yes, I think tallness is um, uh, unrelated to quality of chefness. I think that the tallness might be related to where he lives, though, because he lives in New Mexico. And based on the way he makes it sound, is there's nothing in New Mexico except for him and his mom and his van and litter. And his brother. And some paint. I think he paints. Like... Like houses? Like house painting and stuff. Okay. All yes. right, sure. And then that, I guess that would then mean that there's at least houses there as well. No, he has no job. Like, he, he, oh. he's a painter, but he he, oh. he doesn't, uh, he doesn't, there's no houses to paint. Can you be a thing if the thing that you do is not there? Like, can you be a poet if you suck at poetry? If you just keep saying, yo, I'm a poet. Well, uh, can no. I read some of your shit? Well, no, I haven't written anything the, ever. The, exa- the example you used is a bad one. Poet. Aiden not being able to paint houses because there's none and still calling himself a painter. Um, a house painter. Yes. Yes, you can do that. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. Yes. Okay, can. I'm going to, I guess I shouldn't, I'll find something that I can do because I can't say I'm a professional arborist because there's lots of trees. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wrong kind of tree, though. The true. I, that. No, it's not. <laughs> the deck. The deck. Agatha, invoker, hardly knower is the, the deck. That's not what it says. It says, I hardly know her. Is that where that came from? Yes. Man, they they forgot the key word in the deck list. He did. All killer, no filler, griller, miller. What the hell, man? What the hell are... I was wondering what the hell was up with this goddamn deck name. Well, And now I know. Let's look at some of the cards. Where do you want? Well, Um, where where do we... Let's start where we usually start. Ramp. Ramp, holy shit. A Woz's a... Pathfinder? The first card's a Lord of the Rings card, man. He wanted this deck to get done. Man, look at these. They, they got nothing that's regular. Look at that. We have to talk about it's every like card. Uncle Brando's bowel movements. We nothing should, that's regular. Nothing regular at all, aside from the fact that they're... Let's just talk about some cards, Ryan. Sure. All right, starting with the ramp, as you said, Woz Pathfinder. <laughs> first of all, who is Woz? Um, the the Woz, or the Wozes were a a forest-dwelling tribe of people that lived uh, between Rohan and Gondor proper. So they weren't in the movies? Correct. Don't exist. What does this card do? 
it's a one one for two taps for a man of any color and you can go re- uh, green six <laughs> <laughs> green six tap another target creature gets plus three and trample until end of turn no in this deck that will probably cost green two green green just green yeah yes so I guess it's worth noting that we're playing some very atypical cards, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, buddy. And we're playing some god dang stinkers. Oh, yeah. We're playing. Actually, I was thinking about it when I was going over the deck this morning. There's lots of cards in here that I've kind of always wanted to play, but I haven't because they suck. But in this deck, they don't suck. And that's very exciting. And we're going to get to some of those as we go along. Okay. And we're going to go a little bit quick because we're going to have to read a lot of these cards because nobody's going to know what Draft Chaff 14 cent has an activated ability for nine mana, what it does. Exactly. Okay. And I'm excited about this. This is one of the cards. This is the first thing I thought about when I thought, what would I put in Agatha before I even looked at the, the rest of the list? This was the first card I thought of. Really? First one. Tanuki Transplanter. Oh, it's a 2-4 equipment dog. Sure. Yeah. For four, uh, when Tanuki Transplanter or equipped creature attacks, add an amount of green equal to its power until it turn doesn't empty, and it's got reconfigure three. Yeah. Which, if you break into that, the reminder text is three, colon, attach it or equip it. Yes. So that is is an activated ability. Of a creature. Of a creature. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a dog. That's right. Oh, man. So it can attack on its own and add two, or you can equip it to your super swole Agatha and swing in and get 11. It's pretty good. This is okay. I like that yes. lots. I like this one, too. I play this in a couple of decks. Svela Ice Shaper. Got three tap, create a colorless manolith Dana Roach token. Yeah, Dana Roach loves this one. And it's also got... Uh, Green, red, six, tap. Look at the top four. You may cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. That's if a good we, one. if I could make that cost green, red, cast a thing. And you could just do it over and over and over and over again. That's, oh, that's baby. Pretty good. That's a that's a good one. We have a Sakura Tribe Elder. Everybody knows that one. Sack and get a mana. Ruby Daring Tracker. Oh, this is a new one. This is a two drop legend. Haste. A, this is a two drop haster mana dork. It's good. That's, 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 I like this. I've played it a couple of times now. I included it in my Wolfgar deck and I've had really good luck with it. Like it, it comes in and it taps for mana right away, which is something lots of mana dorks don't do. Yeah. And also swinging in that particular deck. She swings for five. Yeah, because. It's a five, five haster for two. When you attack with it, Ruby, when you attack with Ruby, what is it? If you control the creature with power four or greater, she gets plus two, plus two till end of turn. There you go. So yeah. she swings for three. Yeah, and then in the deck I play her in, it's five because it doubles that. Oh, sure. So it's she's much better than initially thought of, okay. I think. Leafkin Avenger. This is a four drop, taps for green for each creature you control with power four or greater, which is going to be some. And then it's got red seven. Man, these are hard to read. Red seven, it deals damage equal to its power to a player or planeswalker. It's pretty good. Oh man, if we can make that just cost red, then we just dump like red, 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 yeah. red, red, red. And every time we're dealing four or six or 10 damage, oh, yeah. it's pretty good. Dude, There's there are some other cards in here that are gonna do that as well. Jiraga Tree Speaker. Oh man, level up, that's an activated ability. Sure is. Okay, it's got level up. You During sorcery speed, you go green one and you put a level counter on it. Yep. If it's got one, two, three, or four, you can tap it for green, green. If it's five plus, elves you control have tap, add green, green. And I'm willing to bet we're going to play some elves. There are a couple other elves in here for sure. Goblin, th- it's Filthy Phil. We call it here in the nation. Filthy Phil is Goblin An and Narcomancer. An Narcomancer, yes. It, he makes green and red stuff cost less. Frontier Guide, I like this guy. This is green, three, this is the activated ability. Green three, search your library for a uh, basic land put on tapped. It's basically repeatable. What is it? Rampant growth? Yes. It's rampant growth on legs. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. This is one of the most expensive cards in the deck. It's a saga, and it flips after after you saga it. It flips over to Reflection of Kikijiki. This is the yeah. important part. It's a creature when it flips, and it's got one tap. 
create a token that's a copy of another target non-legendary creature except it has haste then you sacrifice it at end of turn yes so also when it comes into play you get a 2-2 goblin that attacks and creates a treasure token sure that's pretty good too yes bramble familiar i like this card yes this has got adventure you can mill seven cards then put a creature enchantment or land card from among the milled cards onto the battlefield oh man the adventure costs seven but that, and it's not an ability is it no, adventure is like casting a spell. Okay. But it does have an ability, tap to add green, or green one, discard a card, tap, discard a card, return Bramble Familiar to its owner's hand. Ooh. So you could cast it early for two mana, add green over the course of the game, and then late game, pay two, then pay seven more, then get a free thing. Neat. So it, it kind of, it, it works like the opposite of how adventures normally work. Cheap and then cast later. Yeah. This is cheap now, cast expensive adventure later. I like that. Neat. It's not the cool art though, which which is points off. That's okay. The We've storybook got, one is very good. I like it a lot. we got 11 ramps there that all, every one of them, except, well, I guess not Goblin and Narcomancer, but every other one has like an activated ability that we can a, a little bit farm to good effect with Agatha. Agreed. Now, let's talk about some card draws. And there's some card draw, really, in here? So this is going to be good. Yisan the Wandering Bard, or Wanderer Bard. Okay. Green, two, tap, put a verse counter on Yisan, then search your library for a creature with mana value equal to the number of counters on it. It's neat. Do we have ones? We do. We've got a Caustic Caterpillar at one, which is um, uh, a disenchant. Yep. We've got a couple at two that we've read already. Dragus Tree Speaker's a one. There's a bunch of twos. There's a bunch of threes. We're okay. going to talk about a three next. This okay. is a, you're going to get stuff going up here. This is cool. This is, he's a good include. Yavamaya Elder. Yeah, this is uh, kind of from Commander Gone By. Mm -hmm. Kind of fallen out of favor, but three drop, two one. When it dies, you could search your library for two basics, put them into your hand, and it's got two sacrifice draw card. Neat. Which turns a lot better when it's one sacrifice draw card. Yes. Yes. Werewolf pack leader. Ooh. Mm. Uh, it's got pack tactics. Whenever werewolf pack leader attacks, if you attacked with creatures with total power six or greater, draw a card. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's not too bad. That's good. Total power six or greater. This is a three three. It gets you halfway. That's not too bad. Yeah. Also, it got green three until end of turn. Werewolf pack leader has base power and toughness five three and gains trample and loses human. Cool. So just green makes it a five three. Yes. It's pretty good. <laughs> Toski bearer of secrets. Ooh. Can't be countered. Indestructible. Attacks each combat. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Boom. That's a freaking good card. That's a good card. That's a good card. It got indestructible. Why does it have indestructible? Why can't it just be harder to block? Why does it have to be indestructible? Can only be blocked by creatures with flying. Sure. Is that just flying? No. No. <laughs> no. Because it doesn't fly. Yes. Okay. It just jumps really high. <laughs> okay. Ranger class. Oh, frick. Too many things. Uh... Comes into play, you get a wolf, level it up for green one. Whenever you attack, put a plus one, plus one counter on attacking creature. And for four, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells in the top of your library. Of note, those are activated abilities, but at, 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 at in a creature. But not, you, you know what I would rather see instead of ranger class is Vivian Beast's Advocate. I think it's the one, green, green, three. That's the one that lets you look at the top card and play creatures off the top. But it also lets you make beasts to yes. protect her. Yes. And also lets you, when you cast a creature, you can go through your deck to find something that costs less, play it for free. Yes, I play that in my Cascade Super Friends. I think overall, to get to the effect that you want, it's going to cost you less mana, and it's going to give you a bigger dude up front that's going to be more valuable to you. There you go. Because the initial wolf isn't very good, whereas that Vivian Beast, mm -hmm. can it can actually impact you the can game. Make a, you can make a 3-3 three, three Beast with Reach. Yeah. That's good. Like, that's the one I always make. Like that, Me too. Yeah. Because that's the... It, it protects itself very, very well. Yeah, three 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 is pretty good. Yep. Pretty even good. if you just even if she just made three threes all the time, like it 
Yeah. Her, her static ability is super fun and really good. There you go. So there's a there's a recommendation. Next card. I love this one, I was too. just going to say, I know you like this one. Oh, give I it love read. this Give one. it a read. Heartwood Storyteller is a 2-3 tree folk for green, green, one. Whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, each of that player's opponents may draw a card. <laughs> oh, I love that card. I love it. Because what you're going to notice so far is, have we only played creatures? Uh, and two enchantments? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's... Our creature density is very high. Yeah. Next card. Hansk Slayer Zealot. What is this even from? This, my friend, is Daryl. This is Daryl from The Walking Dead. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know we got the real ones of this. We did. Now you do. He's a 4-4 four, four for 4. At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent creates a walker. That's a zombie. Or three of them. He gets three zombies. And then he has tap, deals two damage to target creature, and whenever a zombie an opponent controls eats shit, we draw a card. Why are we playing this? Because it taps to kill a zombie and draw you a card. Deals two damage to target creature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent creates three walkers, and this guy kills him. Yeah. Oh. And then if they attack you, you block him and kill him and draw okay. more cards. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the most amazing card draw spell in the history of card draw spells, Ryan. And Tolly <laughs> Primal Conqueror. This is this is new Tolly. Yes. This is new Tolly. He's a 7-7 seven, seven Trampski. When it enters the battlefield, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among the exiled cards this way without paying their dang old mana cost. Yeah, buddy. Now, here's the thing. That's great. That's cool. But if Agathos got like nine power, uh -huh. his activated ability gets reduced by nine. Yes. And also, Ooh. we could pay Phyrexian green, like Ooh. AKA two life. Oh, yeah, baby. And we flip him over into an 11 11 <laughs> with trample and indestructible. And when he deals combat damage to a player, they get that many poison counters. Nice. Which is 11, by yes. the way. Which is, as we all know, and this is a science fact, enough. Yes. Oh, man. I love doing enough. Me too. Just about as much as I love doing both. <laughs> Usually those things, the Venn diagram of enough and both, overlap and they're, make one circle. Yes, they are the same. <laughs> but with a tolly, it's a double circle. <laughs> it's an infect circle. Now let's talk about a card that we should just immediately cut. Yes. Just immediately cut in Duskwatch Recruiter. Okay, Duskwatch Recruiter, 2-2 two, two for th uh, 2. It's got green 2 activated ability. Look at the top three cards of your library. You can reveal a creature card from among them, put it into your hand, and the rest on the bottom. And then something about day, night, I don't know, turns into a werewolf. And then it's something. got bullshit werewolf, and it makes your creatures cost less, and at the beginning of your up, that, yeah, it's stupid. Got it? No, got this, it it's, it's an activated ability that draws you cards. There's got to be a different one. There has to be. I guarantee you there is. And whatever it is, just find that one so you're not playing a GD werewolf. I suppose. Get them out of here. No time for that. Uh, the next card I do play. I've played this card many a time. Bum Hunter. Bum Hunter. Yes. Drum Bummer. He's also a, good. Yes, he's a four drop 2-2. Two, two. Taps for a colorless, which is cool. Also, at the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with five big, he you, you draw a card. I like that. Yes, he's good. Brightwood Tracker. Five green tap. So, a.k.a. green tap. Look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a creature from among them, put them the rest in the bottom random order. This is the same thing as Duskwatch Recruiter. So, you're right. There is something. Also, we're playing it. Yeah, well, we'll find another one. Also. Both? <laughs> yeah, play, no, don't play both. Play Lizard Blades. Lizard Blades? Lizard Blades is another reconfigure thing, like the Tanuki Transplanter. And it gets haste, right? Double strike. D-strike. Yes, play that instead. Okay. And we have a Beast Whisperer. Yeah. Everybody knows Beast Whisperer. Play Creech, draw card. Where should we go next? We have buff, we have good abilities, and we have the control section. Let's do the control section, because this is kind of like removal and stuff. It's essentially removal. We have a val Here's our first Invoker. Hardly newer. Invoker is a creature type that has a nominal ability for an obscene amount of mana. Is yes. that a fair thing to say? Yes. In this case, it's a three drop, two, three, that's got eight. Eight. Deal three damage to any target. So one. So one. One, okay. It has one, lightning bolt. Yes. Over and over again. Uvenwald Tracker. Uh, that's a fight spell. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry, that's a activated ability that lets you fight. Correct. Here's another creature we can cut because it's a stupid werewolf. Tovalar's Huntmaster. Oh. 
when it enters the battlefield, create two wolves, and it's got daybound, nightbound. And then when it flips over, it has an activated ability. But who cares? Because you'll never do it. Because it's never going to flip over, so cut it and play something else. Okay. Play anything else. Paulo Kranos, the world beater. Ooh, he's got monstrosity. Sure does. Which happens to be an activated ability. Ooh. So he's got green XX, and then he gets monstrous X. And when he becomes monstrous, he deals X damage uh, divided among any number of creatures as you choose. And then they do damage back to him. Which is fine. That's fine. You know what I plan? I can, I can tell you're so excited about it. You know what I plan instead of Tovalar's Huntmaster? Questing Beast. Questy B. Qu- cut him. Questing Beast. There you go. Horde Smelter Dragon. Oh. Short Smeller Dragon. Yes. Ooh. Not do it. No king shaming. Yeah, no. Okay. He's got uh, red, three, destroy an artifact, the, uh, and then he gets big equal to the artifact's mana value. Neat. So that just, like, destroys stuff, and then he just gets huge. You know what else we could play instead of Tovalar's Huntmaster? Kamal Fister of Corosa. Oh, there we go. I love fisting. That's the one. Yes. That's the one we play. Harbringer of the Hunt is the next spell. This guy's got two activated abilities. One for red, two, and he deals one damage to each creature without flying. Neat. And then green, two, deals one damage to each other creature with flying. That's good. Doesn't get himself, gets everybody else. Ember Swallower. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to make a swallow joke, but then I, then I didn't. He's got monstrosity, and when he becomes monstrous, each player sacrifices three lands. I've played this card. Yep. I am a piece of shit. Yep. So is uh, all killer, no filler, griller, miller. Yep. We have a caustic caterpillar. We already talked about that. Yep. It, uh, activated ability, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Here's a, here's a name I never thought I would say in the context, Whoa. even on CCO. On the CCO dude was playing cards, Arashi the Sky Asunder. I honestly never thought we'd get here, but here we are. Ass, sky, under. Yes. Yep. Ass asunder. <laughs> Ass asunder. This is a 5-5 five, five for 5. That's pretty good. It's got green X tap. It deals X damage to target creature with flying. That's terrible. And then it's got channel. Green, green X. Discard, Arashi, so that's an activated ability that you activate when it's in your hand. Yes. And it's still a creature when it's in your hand. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So green, green is what that costs. And then Agatha's power. Discard it. Deals X damage to each creature with flying. Neat. That's pretty good. It's like shitty hurricane. That turns into not bad, kid. Not bad. Yeah. All right, Ryan, we got these big abilities. Yes, They sir. cost lots of mana. Yeah. But we want to make them cost less by making Agatha big. Yes, buff the stuff, let's, if you will. Let's talk about doing that. Oh, you will. We shall. Okay. And we're going to start with Wild Heart Evoker, our second invoker. Yes. That's eight. Give plus five, plus five. So one, five, five. Yes. Viridian Lorebreakers. Gives plus X, where X is the number of artifacts your opponents control. Activated ability for green and... Hmm. Three. So it could be green, it could be green and two. Either way, Agatha's going to get super swole after that point. Yeah, yeah, you go like this. Ooh, I see your Dockside Extortionist. I'm going to cast a Viridian Lore Breaker. <laughs> 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 these two, one of these things is not like the other. Right? Oh, <laughs> man. Rancor. Oh, hardly no horror. Nice. Yes. Uh, plus two, trample. When Rancor eats crap, you get it back. Lava Fume Evoker. Ooh. Invoker. Eight. So one, plus three, plus oh. Inner Flame Igniter. This is cool. Red, two. Creatures you control get plus one until end of turn. If this is the third time this has resolved, you creatures you control also gain first strike. I That's like the cycle of elementals from Laura when had those, where if you activated their abilities a bunch of times in a turn, you'd get some kind of benefit. Yes. I liked those. I yep. liked that lots. I think they should do that more. I do. Yep. Hound Tamer should be should be Hero's Blade, but it isn't. Tell them what it is, Ryan. Okay, Hound Tamer. <laughs> Hound Tamer. Is that like a, what do we call it? A carpet snake? <laughs> carpet python. <laughs> carpet python. <laughs> oh, man, okay. <laughs> Hound Tamer. Best friend cover right there. 3-3 three, three, Trampler. It's got green three. Put a plus one counter on target creature. Just and play day, hero. day bound, night bound. Just play Hero's Blade and avoid the werewolf. Helena, Alana Partners. This is a good card. Oh, these, these, yeah, this is a good card. Yeah, I played against Helena, Alana, and I just got my whole ass pushed in. They are 
very good. Okay. You didn't like them when we reviewed them. I remember. I, I, now that I've played with them and against them, uh, mm-hmm. I was wrong. Now I'll you got your it. python carpeted. Yeah, I was wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, oh, man, I just turned it into a verb. Yep. Past tense. Yep. I'd be tense if I was getting that done to me. This is a 2-3 first strike reach for four. Reach around and a carpet python. All in one card. Yep. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a... Put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control where X is Halana Lana's power against haste until end of turn. So here's what you do. You use all the pump on her yes. instead of on Agatha. Yes. Then you go to combat. Then you make fucking Agatha giant. And then she just stays giant. Yeah, because plus oh, one plus man. one counters. Yeah, That's buddy. why it's so freaking good. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, oh, I guess I'll chump until next turn. <laughs> <laughs> Agatha or Agatha's augmenter. I mean, it is guardian augmenter. This card's good. This I don't is, know why this card don't see no more play. This is a solid card. This card's got flash. Yes, it does. I reviewed this card very highly in when did it come out? Uh, nah, 2019 or 2020? Uh, 2021. I remember, I remember being super high on this card. Oh, yeah, C21. 2-2 two, two for 3 with flash. Commander creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2. Yep. Also... Commanders you control have hexproof. Yeah, buddy. Ooh, I almost put this in my Animar deck. The white one is also very good. Gives them indestructible. Same thing, indestructible though. Yeah, which one's better? Uh, I like Guardian Augmenter because it has flash. I'm not sure if the white one has flash. Ooh. Elder of Laurels. Okay. Green, three. Target creature gets plus X, where X is the number of creatures we control. It's a good one. Yep. Here's a card that I like a lot in here. I never thought of this one. Diviner's Wand. Ooh, yeah. Okay, Equip Creature has. This is what the Equip Creature gets. Whenever you draw a card, this creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying until end of turn. Because that's what sticks do in Morning Tide. Yes. Also, four, draw a card. Boom. AKA one draw card. One that gets really card. good. And whenever a wizard... Enters the battlefield, you can attach Diviner's Wand to it. I don't know if that matters or not. Agatha, not a wizard. She's a warlock. Different yeah. things, but here we are. Yeah. Defiler of Vigor. Ooh, D of V. Google at your own risk. It gives um, uh, Phyrexian green to a, to a guy, right? When you cast a, a spell, you can pay Phyrexian green instead of green for one instance of green in the casting cost and whenever you cast a green permanent you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control Ooh, that's pretty good Ooh, the venn diagram of creatures that get plus ones with that all oh, very all high. circle yes all circle commander's plate Ooh, equip creature gets plus three plus three and has protection from the colors that it isn't if you want to not pay 32 dollars hero's blade Mm. Mm-hmm. Arwen Weaver of Hope. Ooh, I like this one. That's because it's from Lord of the Rings. Yes. Hey, the, the one of the the first and one of the last ones we're doing. Okay. Two one elf noble. Hey, there's an elf. Yep. Three mana. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with a number of plus ones on it equal to Arwen's toughness. So you you Helena and Alana Arwen, and then you play everything else. Yeah. 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 Now we're talking. Okay. Okay. Now we're we're cheapening abilities. We're making mana, we're drawing cards, we're removing stuff, all with crazy abilities. But what are some of the just the, the good-ass abilities we're going to play, right? Yes. Let's get into some of this. We're going to start with Welder aut- Automation. Welder Automation. Welder Automaton. Shut up. You're close. I was so close. I can read so good. This guy's got red, three, one damage to each opponent. So red, damage, damage. to each opponent. Yes. Sylvanas' Invoker. Oh. Eight... Untap target land you control. It becomes an 8-8 elemental creature with trample and haste. It's still a land. Now, what's interesting is when this costs one, we can target a land Mm -hmm. and untap it. Right. Whoa. Does this go infinite? It would if we played Grohl Turf, but we don't. And we should. Becomes an 8-8. Can't you just target the same land over and over again? Yeah, but you'd have to tap it for one to activate the ability again so it goes infinite but it does nothing yeah it gives you infinite tap and untap but nothing else so you'd have to make a land that makes more than one mana and then it would go infinite and give you infinite mana there you go grawl turf baby 
Ovia Pashi Sage Life Crafter. What? That's, what? 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 Okay. Green two, create a servo. Green four, tap, create X colorless construct artifacts where X is the number of creatures you control. Neat. Sure, that just, just makes lots of guys. I both love and hate this next card in Orochi Egg Watcher. <laughs> egg Washer. Man, I want to get my egg washed and I want to get my carpet python. <laughs> <laughs> No, my python carpeted. There it is. Um, okay, green two. It's, it's a flippy dippy Kamigawa guy, right? No, spinny. Spinny. Spin. Oh yeah, spin, 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 spin. Uh, green two. Make a snake. Yep. Then you flip it. If you got like ten snakes, right? And then it flips to green. Sacrifice a creature. Target creature gets plus three until end of turn. I don't like that you have to flip it. Because mm. what if you just want to mech snack? That's all you want to do is mech snack. But once you have ten snack, flip. Don't like that. Mm, no spin. Yeah, spin. Mm. Yes, spin. Orin Reef Invoker. Mm. Eight plus five and gains trample, or one. Y- uh, y- uh, yeah, what you said. Kazandu Tusk Caller. Oh, I want to get my tusk called. <laughs> I don't know what that even means. This is another level upper from originally from Rise of Eldrazi, Rise of useless type of counter. You level it up for green one levels two through five. You tap it to create a 3-3 three, three guy. Levels 6 plus, create two 3-3 three, three guy. What's the what's the level up guy? And Joel will have it on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. It's a red guy and like levels 1 through 5, I don't think do anything. But once it hits level 5 or 6, whenever it attacks, it sixes everything they control. Oh. That would be good in here. I think go. it's level up is ridiculously expensive too. Yeah. That would be a good card to have in here. Hydra Broodmaster. Monstrosity X. When it becomes monstrous, create X, X, X. Ooh. Oh. Green Hydra Creature Tokes. I like everything that does that. Gelatinous Genesis, this. X, X, one X? other card. Yeah, where it makes X, X, Xs. I love I that. I love Triple X. I love those cards. The movie, obviously. Now, here's the card I always wanted to play this because it's a Goblin Mutant. Oh. I've always wanted to play this, but never did because the ability is red seven and it's flame wave invoker. So what you mean is red. Yes. To deal five damage to target player or planeswalker. Yeah, buddy. Dragon whisperer. Ooh, red. Whenever. Whoa. Okay. Red. Dragon whisperer gains flying until end of turn. Red one. It gets plus one plus oh until end of turn. Red, red four. Put a 4-4 red dragon creature with flying onto the battlefield. Activate only if you control 8 or greater power. Neat. Yes, just make 4-4s four for red red. That's, that's pretty cool. good. That, that's like um, that's like Luminarch Ascension good right there. Hey? Truth. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. truth. Yeah. yeah. Cogwork. Uh, hey, wait. Cock, cockwork Assembler. Oh, yeah. Cockwork Assembler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we're talking. Okay, I don't know what an ass emblem is, but um, I can imagine it has like a big jewel on it. Seven, create a creature token that's a copy of target artifact. No, create a token that's a copy of an artifact. It gains haste, and then you exile at the end of turn. <laughs> Ryan? <laughs> yes? All killer, no filler miller, knows his shit. Yes. Long time member of the nation. Yes. Long time members of CCO Nation will know that if you are going to play a deck that revolves around activated abilities, it would behoove your business to play the most versatile, most powerful, handsomest creature in all of Magic the Gathering, Brash Taunter. I love getting my business hooved. Oh, it's been a long time. Since Is that Brash like Taunter's getting a carpet written. python? It's exactly the same. Getting my business hooved. Yep, that's ex- that's the exact thing. Yes. So the, the, there are synonyms for one another. Brash Taunter, of course, being an indestructible one-one for red four. Whenever it is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent, and then it has red two tap. It fights another creature. So red tap fight a creature. Yes. Okay. You wait until somebody has an Animar that's a hundred hundred. Fight it. No. So good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Balls Invoker. Oh, Balls. In, I didn't even, I'm not even making that up. Balls Invoker. Balls in Stroker. Uh, Balls Choker. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Eight deals four to each opponent. That's a good one. That's a good one. Because you just one. go one, four, one, four, one, yeah. four, one, four. That's solid. Yeah. 
Baru Worm Speaker. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> worm Speaker, hey? Yeah. Not a worm stepper? Nope. Mm. nope. I guess that's just for snakes. Yep. You pay one, you make a 4-4 four, four worm. And worms you control also get plus two, plus two, and have trample. Yes. This ability costs X plus to activate where X is the greatest power among worms you control. So if you make one, it would actually, like, dub. Would that make Agatha have to work less hard to make his ability cost one? Yes. Because you have a worms that makes the ability cost green two, and then if Agatha is a two-two, it just costs green. Yes. Neat. Ballista Watcher. <laughs> That sounds dirty. I don't know what that is, but that's dirty. Mm, crap. You, you go red two tap, deals one damage to any target, day bound, night bound. You know what this should be instead? <laughs> Selvala. Selvala? Uh -huh. The one that taps for the greatest power among creatures. Uh, in control. That's what, that's what that should be. Last card to deck. Last card is Ardaz Cobbler of War. Oh man, I want to get my war cobbled. I don't know what that means either, but this is a one one for two with haste. Hoste, if you will. I won't. Whenever Ardaw's Cobbler of War or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature gets plus two until end of turn. Also, green, uh, no, red, three, create a one-one red goblin creature with haste. Activate only as a sorcery. Sure. So you get, you're basically making spark elementals that don't trample for red. Gob, 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 go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, buddy. That's the deck. That's the whole deck. Lots of stinkers, hey? Lots of stinkers. Lots of stinkers. There's lots of horrific cards in there, and but, I like it. But, but, but. Okay, here's the thing. I want to move right to the budget section because this is fantastic. Yes, the budget of the deck is very low. As of now, this deck costs 125 American Bald Eagle Smackaroos. Yeah. Yes. Now, Fable of the Mirror Breaker isn't a creature that doesn't have a very good creature ability that we can't reduce anyways yes sure also most expensive second most expensive card in the deck at 28 bucks yep take it out got it got him got it okay commander's plate got it you had a suggestion hero's blade hero's blade yep i don't remember what that does is that the one that equips automatically it, it equips automatically to any legendary creature that comes into play gives him plus three plus two there you go it all it would go on your r1 too if you wanted to go that way and and then your guys get bigger. Yeah. Okay. So it's just it's cool, and that one costs like nothing. Two cents. Yeah. It's, Compared it's to thirty two dollars. Correct. We've cut sixty dollars in two cards. Yes. We're gonna cut like ten or fourteen more. Reliquary Tower probably don't need it. Yeah. Get it out of there. And I'm only saying that because it's a two color deck, and we don't we're not drawing a whole bunch of cards. Mm. It's just in there because it's in there. Yes. But if you don't have an extra one, don't sweat it. Just play a forest. Yeah. Also, Toski. We said he's good and he does draw cards, but we've got like a ton of other card draw cards. When you have a two drop commander that you can turn into a 10 10 without a whole lot of difficulty, play Momentous Fall or Life's Legacy. There you go. Just sack her, draw 14, and then just play her again. So we cut nearly $75 from the deck in four cards. Yeah. That I think are easy cuts. Yeah. And then you can cut all those shitty werewolves too and put in some other stuff. This deck. After our seventy-three dollars in cuts, comes to fifty-two dollars. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and, th and this is shit that you're gonna ask. Hey, do you have one of these? And they're gonna go, huh? Are you? I will give it to you, but you have to take all of the other cards I'm handing you as well. That's what I do when people ask me for jank. I'll give them this big stack of shit that I don't want. So I'm gonna give you this card, but you have to take the rest of these cards too, and you have to take them home. And then they do. Do you have this card? Yes, it's gonna cost you carpet python. <laughs> <laughs> So $50 deck if we cut four cards. Strengths and weaknesses, it's new and exciting and cool because it opens up the design space or, or the play space, the build space, to play jank stuff that we never heard of. Here's something that I really like I love too. that. It, it definitely absolves me and makes me feel super smart when I say that Grohl can do everything. There you go. Because this is a unique deck that lets you play garbage. It makes bad cards good is my note. Yeah. We've told you about garbage for 45 minutes garbage and we're playing it all and it's good now yep because of agatha that's yep. dope this is like the t-shirt i seen where they're like the the raccoon is deadlifting but instead of weights on either end of the bar it's just giant bags of trash <laughs> that's agatha that's agatha and aiden miller yeah <laughs> and yes us. yeah we are also there weaknesses 
It's reliant on the commander. Very oh. reliant on the commander. Oh, baby, is it reliant on the commander? But she's a two drop, though. Even if she dies once, she's yeah. only going to cost four. You've got two or three plays of Agatha before you're in really deep shit. Yeah. But without Agatha, the deck reverts to garbage. Yes. And the other criticism I would make of it, and I understand why no traditional ramp like Soul Ring or like Atlanta or Elves, Birds of Paradise. Or, or like Mindstone and stuff like that. You could pay but, the, but there is none of that. You could play Gilded Goose in here. It's on theme. It has a an activated ability that would be reduced where it makes more foods. Oh, there you go. Right, like you could. That's a good one. I think you could play Gilded Goose and not feel like you're deviating from the theme too much. And he's not a huge budget include either. Yes. So, uh, so there's that. Yeah, it just got a reprint, didn't it? Or two uh, reprints? It, I, it was in Lord of the Rings pre-con. Yeah, it has the super cool art where you're yeah. stealing a carrot. Yeah. Man, that's such a fun yeah. card. I wish I had one of those. That one reminds me of my dog digging in the garden. There, Frick. There's a few cards from Lord of the Rings I just kind of want for the art. But yeah, I, I just, me too. <laughs> I just never got them, and that kind of makes me sad. But well, which one? Here ones? we are. Well, there's Gilded Goose, and there's a goblin card that has a really funny new art on it. I can't remember which one it was. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Crater Maker? Yes, Goblin Crater Maker. Yes. Yeah, very funny. It was in the it was in the um, Mordor precon. Yeah, I played in my Thick Daddy deck. There's just some cool ass cards that just have neat art that I kind of wanted, but like, well, I already got foil ones, or I already got one. Yeah, and Lord of the Rings hard uh, cards around here where we are very hard to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very now, difficult. There's I, like eight people at the LGS trying to do Nazgul decks, and I think we've all managed to do it now. But boy, there was a lot of like insider trading trying oh. to get everybody their set of nine. And <laughs> Price holy, fixing and stuff, oh, eh? <laughs> oh man, it was it was a thing. Oh man. Well, I've got card of the week as Arwen because I think that that card's good in this deck. I think it's good overall. It's legendary. We just talked about Gilded Goose being a, a wanted include in the deck. If you want to pick any of that up, you go on over to FusionGamingOnline.com and you use... CCO summer promo code. Mm -hmm. And if it's your first time, CCO perks promo code. When you spend over a hundred bucks, you could buy this entire deck and still have money left over in your hundred dollars when you use CCO perks you, promo code. You go through all your chaff, you find what you already have. It's going to be lots of it. And then you could even splurge on either the Lord of the Rings Gilded Goose or you get Ooh. the Secret Lair one, which is really cool. Oh. Yeah, there's a really nifty Secret Lair one too. Oh. It's all like. Uh, what do you call it? It's like a, like a realistic looking one. It's it's kind of kind of nice actually. Yeah, yeah. Even you know this this is what I would do. I would buy Sauron the Dark Lord and mm -hmm. just make a dirty Grixis CEDH deck with it. You've already done that though. Oh yeah. Well, I would still go to FusionGamingOnline.com <laughs> to do it. Um, listen, face to face games coming up. Yep. Promo code CCO gets you five dollars off your package. Come by, say hi. We had a great time in Edmonton. Yep. We had a great time in Calgary last time. Yep. Over the moon in Vancouver. We had the best time. It made me appreciate seagulls. Oh. How excited was I to see the ocean? I like seagulls now. Yeah. And we're going to have new CCO merch available oh, there. Baby. Before the official launch online, we're going to have the on sale summer stuff because I got to get it out of my house mm -hmm. there as well. Come by, say hi, get a deal, new stuff, some new gaming supplies. Uh, it's all going to be there, all in Calgary. And for everybody else, we'll see you at the CCO Experience in Las Vegas. Yes, we shall. And we're going to also see you next week for a super exciting another episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Woo!